everyone. Today I'm going to talk about how to use Bitcoin privately. How can you transact with Bitcoin without giving away your identity or let anyone else know that you're using it? Uh, so I'm going to give you a kind of uh, tutorial on how to do that. I'm not going to go super into the weeds, but I will give you all the resources that you need to go be able to do it yourself. And before we begin, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Ledin. Ledin is the best place to lend out your Bitcoin to earn a yield or borrow against it. I personally use them, them to earn a yield on my Bitcoin. Definitely recommend them. Check out. I've got the link below. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and dive on into the article. So I first write this on Thursdays in the Held Report, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner here. The Held Report is a newsletter that I have uh, that my subscribers get every single Thursday. Uh, they're the first ones to get this information. And then on Sundays is when you see it on YouTube. And so the topic today is using Bitcoin privately. Well, uh, a lot of people have misconceptions over like how private Bitcoin is. And I want to, you know, uh, demystify Bitcoin and, and what its privacy looks like natively and then look at different tools we can use to increase that privacy. So Bitcoin isn't private by default. Um, it's uh, it's actually a little bit more transparent than people realize. Bitcoin's on a public ledger. The Bitcoin blockchain, that public ledger is visible by anyone. And so if you see, you know, so if you know someone owns his address, owns Bitcoin at that address, um, and you see how that moves through the Bitcoin blockchain, they can potentially identify you and see where you're spending your money or know how much Bitcoin you have. So I think that, you know, privacy is a fundamental human right. And knowing how to use Bitcoin privately fully leverages Bitcoin's value. This is this is why Bitcoin's valuable is is its scarcity, it's its monetary policy, it's hard to seize, it's immutable in terms of you can send it to anyone, but also because you have, um, you know, because you have some, uh, you know, measure of privacy if you choose to do so. Now, it's not possible to have perfect privacy with any chain, including Bitcoin. Uh, for example, have you never told anyone about Bitcoin? Have you never Googled Bitcoin USD? <laughs> you know, have you ever, you know, when you do all these privacy measures, will you never have a data leak? I find that very improbable. Um, we will try to get as, you know, we'll get to pretty good privacy, but I can't promise perfect privacy and I don't think anyone can. So when you hear these privacy blockchains like uh, Monero and Zcash talk about perfect privacy, it's a little bit disingenuous because there's all other aspects of the transaction that occurs outside of that blockchain and you've got to do all of that privately too. So this is just talking about the on-chain privacy for the Bitcoin blockchain. So um, I, there's a lot of different ways to slice and dice this. It's a really complex topic, and I felt like I really wanted to like create the most simple version possible. There's so many nuances with this. I chose to basically highlight one use case, which is hodling. If you want to use Bitcoin in like a daily transactional manner and maintain privacy, that's like a whole nother level of scrutiny, and there's a whole nother level of instruction that needs to happen there. Um, in writing this, I borrowed very, very heavily from a couple different guides. One, Jameson Lopp, he's a legend, OG in the space, really smart. He's compiled a bunch of different privacy guides for Bitcoin. Definitely recommend if you do go ahead and move forward with trying some of this out, give these a deeper read. Um, a couple other ones as well, as well the Bitcoin privacy guide and, um, you know, kind of a privacy, uh, a little bit of a, a privacy, uh, a, a little bit of a very basic tutorial on different privacy type of um, terminologies and um, methods. So definitely recommend that um, you give those a read if you want to go in depth. But here I'm going to give you the kind of the TLDR guide on how to get started. So buying Bitcoin. When you first buy Bitcoin, you can buy Bitcoin um, in a identifiable manner or in a, from a KYC service, a know your customer service. That's a, a service kind of like uh, Kraken or Coinbase or... Um, or Cash App or PayPal, they ask for your identifiable information. For example, like on Kraken, so here's Kraken, and on here, you look at the different sort of verification tiers, and these unlock certain capabilities at Kraken. Kraken's a company that has to adhere to local regulations, and we have to make sure that we're checking different IDs and proof of rev residency and full name. This is called KYC, or, or know your customer, or identifiable information. Obviously, when you're trying to transact in the most private manner possible, that's not the best way to acquire coins. The best way to acquire coins would be services like HODL HODL, a service that allows you to find other counterparties. And what's really cool about that is they have like a built-in rating system. So these are pseudonymous names. These aren't people's real names. They're pseudonymous names that come with, um, you know, come with ratings. So you can have uh, some measure of trust when you transact with them. 
Um, also, what they do is they hold your funds in escrow. So they'll hold the Bitcoin until the fiat version uh, of the fiat leg of the transaction clears. So and then HODL HODL takes a cut for that. So there's a, there's a guide um, from here uh, and I'll include these links will all be below so you can check these out. Um, this is a step by step uh, process of how to go transact on HODL HODL. And then there's BISC. So BISC kind of in a similar function. BISC is a, a decentralized exchange, if you will, or an exchange that allows you to transact with other folks without having to um, disclose your identifiable information. Um, and there, there's also a guide there as well. Finally, you've got local meetups. So if you meet up with local Bitcoiners and they want to transact with you and they don't want to ask for your information, you can do that as well. Um, so I'll, again, all the links will be included below. Um, a few notes about this. Most of the time, you're going to pay a markup of at least like 5 to 10%. Uh, because P these individuals who are transacting with you, you know, it's they could get in trouble for this, so they want to be compensated for that risk. Uh, theft is always a risk, so there's a good guide on safety here, which, let's see, here we go. This is from HODL HODL, a really good guide, and again, I'll have the links below. Um, this will give you a good guide on like, okay, what do I need to do to make sure I'm transacting safely? How do I make sure I, there's no theft involved? Um, and then, you know, in this country, in a country you're in, it may or may not be illegal. The Bitcoin blockchain doesn't care about that. And, you know, the value of Bitcoin is that it lets you do things in a permissionless way, but just tread carefully there. Okay. So now after you've bought the Bitcoin, you've got to transfer it. So whether you bought it on a KYC service, now, if you do that, that's a little trickier because now if they uh, go ask that company, Hey, did Dan buy Bitcoin over here? They'll say, yes, he did. Um, but uh, you know, if you bought it from that or an anonymous source, what you want to do it is transfer it to a wallet uh, uh, that you control, and it's called a non-custodial wallet. What that means is that you're in complete control of your funds. Um, that also means if you lose your password or lose your backup, you lose your Bitcoin for forever. But you know, in this manner, if you're wanting to transact fully private, you want to make sure you have complete control of the funds. And so, wallets here that I'd recommend one is on Android Samurai. Samurai is a really great wallet really slick, um, sharp folks who put this together. They've got all sorts of like super, super, uh, uh, you know, features that are made for um, transacting privately. And so they've come up with some of their own techniques to do that. And so definitely recommend them. You've also got Wasabi wallet and Wasabi's on desktop. Wasabi's great. Um, another fantastic wallet. So Samurai was on Android. Wasabi's on desktop. So Wasabi, same sort of thing. They've got uh, you know, uh, coin joins, which we'll get to in a second. So mixing your coins, uh, being able to control individually which coins you move. Uh, that's a feature both of Samurai and Wasabi. And then Tor integration, they both have that as well, um, which we'll get into in a second. But yeah, same sort of idea, but on desktop. Uh, there isn't a good one for iOS. So sorry, iOS users, you're just kind of out of luck there. Um, when you do this, you're going to want to make sure that you connect through Tor. You're going to want to make sure that you run your own Bitcoin full node and have a connect using the wallet software to connect to your Bitcoin full node. The reason why you want to do that is because with your Bitcoin full node, you can propagate the transaction directly from your own Bitcoin full node, which means your data is not passing through any other node or any other service. You know, when you transact with a normal wallet, you're going through their server and their full node to hit to the Bitcoin blockchain versus your own node where your transaction goes through that node and then to the Bitcoin blockchain. And so uh, Wasabi has a really good write-up of how to connect your Wasabi wallet to a Bitcoin full node. And there's other tutorials as well, like for Samurai. Um, when you do this, uh, you're going to have a, something called a backup. So when you have this wallet, there's going to be a 12 to 24 word backup. And that's what they both call it. That backup uh, you can store on a piece of paper. But what I would recommend, storing it on a crypto tag. Crypto tag is a sponsor of mine. It's a titanium backup and you stamp in those 12 words into this into this piece of metal here. It's a really great product. Highly recommend it. Um, you know, it's, it's made for uh, made for extreme situations, bulletproof, fireproof, waterproof. So definitely check that out. Um, OK, so once you got in that wallet now, now what do you do? Well, you want to be able to coin join them or mix them in order to obfuscate the previous history. So what you're doing is you're taking your coins with a bunch of other people's coins, mixing them together. And then at the end, people don't really know where, which coins belong to who. And there's um, instructions here and here, which, again, I'll include a lot of the links below um, for you to be able to do this yourself. But these uh, instructions show you how to do that. Uh, basically, what you're going to do, um, you know, through here, it walks you through step by step on how to initiate that process per, uh, for each type of wallet. 
And so when you go through that, what it'll do is it'll it'll walk you through. And the mixing process typically takes, you know, hours. This is like an hour, long, more than an hour maybe, like a couple hours at least. So just be prepared that these do run multiple mixes over and over. So that's going to take some time. Um, if you're more technically minded, you can check out Join Market. Join Market's really cool because Join Market is a little bit more technical and you can technically get paid to mix your coins. So um, with some of these coin join services uh, like Wasabi uh, and Samurai, some of the service providers there take a cut and some don't. Um, but with uh, Join Market, it's more of like one of the first DeFi products for Bitcoin where there's makers and takers. So there's takers of people willing to mix coins and there's makers, people willing to mix coins at any given time. The takers want to mix their coins immediately. The makers are like, cool, here's some coins you can mix. These are my coins. And so the takers pay for that, that service, that convenience. So you can actually get paid to coin join, which is really cool. So if you're worried about on-chain transaction fees, because this isn't cheap, um, you can do that. So this is an overly simplified manner of how to transact with Bitcoin privately, or at least how to get coins from a source to a wallet you control, mix it, and have it in a place that's pretty damn private. Now, perfect privacy, again, is near and unachievable. If you've ever told anyone about Bitcoin, if you've ever Googled it, you know, there's probably a record of that. But what this does for your money on chain is it makes it as hard as possible to find. Um, you know, this, I think, you know, I think privacy is a fundamental human right. And, uh, you know, hopefully this guide, it, there's a lot more to this and there's a lot of nuance and like, if you mess one of these things up, you could be discovered. And that's where I think um, I want to caveat perfect privacy is near impossible. Read the more in-depth guides if you really want to go all the way down the rabbit hole. But doing this or like going around this direction should put you in the right spot, at least to get started. Um, hope you enjoyed. Hope this was informational. Uh, if you like this, please give me a subscribe or a like or throw a comment. That helps with the algorithm, helps get this content in front of more people. All right. Appreciate it. Cheers. Bye.